A conversation about criminal justice reform will take place in Roxbury this Saturday as part of Madison Park Development Corporation's Civic Engagement Series. The event's also part of a campaign called Stuck on Replay. To tell us about the event is the Civic Engagement Coordinator from the Madison Park Development Corporation, Ed Shoemaker. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Ed. Thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I know recently you were on talking about civic engagement as in, you know, watch the debates and get out the vote. But to talk about the connection between that and the topic of the event on Saturday. Yeah, so um, a lot of the times in the community, uh, we're always looking for ways that we can uh, tie in sort of uh, our broader civic engagement efforts within um, sort of local bite-sized pieces. And what I mean by that is uh, the different issues that affect your daily life within the community here in Roxbury, uh, issues that are affecting communities of color, issues that are affecting uh, low-income communities, and specifically uh, criminal justice reform. And of course, stuck on replay means that why is it that so many people who come out of a prison or the House of Correction end up going back and, and, and how that can be avoided. Yes, uh, so it's, it's uh, different pieces from how we can reduce recidivism as well as how we can uh, improve the way that we address these issues as a community. And by that I mean uh, sort of stuck on replay, how I, I sort of interpreted it in the beginning was uh, sort of we're sort of stuck in a uh, cycle of violence and uh, trauma as a community that it just sort of keeps happening over and over and over. It's like every single summer, you know, the, the temperature rises and then we have, you know, outbreaks and violence and, I mean, even, you know, deep into, you know, the fall and you know, some of our um, colder months, we see, we see a lot of violence. So um, just the rallies, uh, the community meetings sometimes is, is not enough. And we really need the grassroots support from the neighborhoods, uh, having you know all the people show up, uh, so that we can have our voice heard. Because at the end of the day, you know you got, you got to have everybody show up and have everybody unified. That's the only way that you know anything's going to happen. Well, when you mentioned the, the cycle of violence here. You know, one of the things I, I, I came across lately is that uh, uh, sometimes uh, the law can be a little too harsh in, in taking somebody who maybe is starting to walk around with a gun and, and, and if, you, if you come down with the full force of the law against them, you might make things worse when a different approach might be more effective. Yeah, I would definitely have to agree with that. Um, if you're talking about like a first time offender, somebody very young, somebody who is likely very impersonable, uh, impressionable, um, that's probably somebody that you want to pull aside and work with. Um, and, if, and if you sort of just sort of lay down the hammer, uh, so to speak, with the law, and um, you know, makes it, that makes it so that uh, the, the youth or the person in that situation is going to be unable to uh, regain uh, a footing in the economy, which is going to sort of push them deeper and deeper into you know a life of crime and uh, just you know in the revolving door. Well, 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 the other lesson that we've been seeing lately is that if you want to make changes in this, there is no single um, silver bullet, I hate to use that analogy, right. um, but you have to chip away at different things. And, and just this year, the state legislature has made some changes in, in letting people get back their driver's license, for example, when they've had an offense that really had nothing to do with driving. Yeah, yeah so that, that, that's one of the great reforms that you know, came from a lot of grassroots movements and folks you know, speaking speaking out and speaking together, uh, and it's a unified vo voice. So uh, I like what you said, that it's not a silver bullet, and it's, you know, the analogy with, with, with the violence, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like the only way that we can sort of chip away at it, um, maybe like a, not, not a silver bullet, but like a silver spike and hammer that we can keep chipping and chipping away is the vote, you know, one vote at a time. You know, that's, that's so you, had, you chip away at sort of some of these systemic issues um, from across the board, whether it's criminal justice reform, voting rights, uh, you know, the, the uh, ACLU just um, sued against the Secretary of State to uh, increase the, um, well, decrease the time in which, you know, you can register to vote um, so that, you know, you don't have to wait 20 days between the last uh, deadline and the day that you can vote. Because I personally just changed my address um, and then I voted early. So to me, you know, it is a bit arbitrary. And uh, I feel like if, you know, if you can get it done within a certain amount of time, that's the amount of time that it should be uh, adjusted to. We're talking with Ed Shoemaker from the Madison Park Development Corporation. Um, let's talk about some of the other things going on with, with civic engagement, especially as you talked about here, trying to get people out to vote. Uh, uh, you've got stuff planned over the next few days because you know we're, we're in that countdown right now, right? Yeah, so our Stuck on Replay event is going to be happening at the Smith House uh, at 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. That's a Stuck on Replay, which is the, we're kicking off our civic engagement series for Madison Park Development Corporation. And the reason why we chose to do it before Election Day is to sort of let people know that uh, the, even though the most important 
act that you'll take as far as your civic duty is voting is not the only thing that you can do. It's about showing up to the community meetings. It's about uh, if you have, uh, like lately, there's been issues uh, throughout Boston with uh, heroin needles being left in playgrounds and sort of citizens taking it upon themselves, whether it is on Facebook Live or posting on Facebook as they're cleaning up, trying to draw awareness. It's really about showing up. So um, providing different opportunities for folks to come together and really um, just, you know, uh, be civically engaged. So, so that, that's what we're doing with this event here. So it's at the Smith House, 757 uh, Shawmut Avenue. That's our elderly housing uh, for Madison Park uh, at the Smith House. And it's going to be from 3 to 6. Uh, we've invited uh, Governor Charlie Baker. Uh, we've invited the Speaker of the House. Uh, it's on the Senate President's schedule. Uh, I, just, I just confirmed. Uh, Chief Justice Gantz is going to be there. Uh, we have uh, Conan Harris who is working with the Boston My Brother's Keeper. He's going to be on the panel. Uh, Abergall Forrester, who is the uh, Director of Community Action at Madison Park, he's going to be on the, uh, on the panel. So we have, we have a great panel. Uh, also, uh, Monica Cannon, uh, she was a candidate for uh, state rep. She's going to be on the panel, and as well as uh, China Tyler, uh, she is the uh, state, state, state rep, rep elect. Uh, uh, she will be, yeah, that's right. Well, she yeah. won't be on the panel, but she, she uh, may attend, uh, as well as uh, Andrea Campbell and Tito Jackson. So we're really trying to get um, uh, the political figures there, but more importantly, uh, and I always stress this, that it's really important to get the community members there because, you know, you can get the political people there if you have connections, um, but if you can get the people there from the community, they're going to come anyways. Explain how important it is because it, I mean, we have an election where a lot of people say that they don't like any of the candidates. They don't like the major candidates. They don't like the minor candidates. <laughs> and some of them, they just say, I, I'm not sure I even want to go out there and, and vote. And, and at the same time, you just mentioned it. If you don't show up, if people don't see that you're, you're there and that you care, I guess you, you're, just, you're just hurting yourself probably. Yeah, and it's particularly important with what's been going on with a lot of development, uh, especially in Roxbury. Uh, it's really important that we you know, maintain and increase our voter base over there because um, as, as we start talking about uh, development without displacement uh, and you know, uh, community development corporations uh, like Madison Park um, you know, working to make sure that there is affordable options for our residents in Roxbury, um, it, it's something that we really need folks uh, and, and residents across Boston, but specifically in Lower Roxbury, to really pay attention to and, uh, and come out to vote. Uh, because, like, like you said, uh, if you don't vote, then you don't exist. Uh, talk about what you've been doing more recently as far as the voter turnout, because we have uh, early elections already uh, started in Boston. Anything yeah. you can tell us about that so far? Yeah, so we did a, uh, on October 29th, this Saturday, uh, the Bruce Bowling Building in Lower Roxbury was an early voting site from 12 to 6. And uh, we hosted a uh, barbecue, uh, but it was more than just a barbecue. We had uh, a lot of the organizations that represent Ma uh, not Ma well, Mass Vote was a part of it. It was the knock across Boston with Mass Vote, um, but the Rocks Vote Coalition uh, members really came together in a strong way. You had uh, the New Westra Comunidad, who did a garden cleanup from 9 a.m. really, really cold and wet that day, from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, we had the Orchard Garden Resident Association, who did a garden cleanup from 11 to 1. Uh, and then we kicked off the barbecue at 12 o'clock. Uh, Mothers for Justice and Equality did a, led a march through Orchard Gardens as well as uh, Madison Park Village. Um, we had the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative who did a uh, land trust video showing at the Dudley Street li uh, at the Dudley Library, uh, and then marched all the attendees to the Bruce Bowling Building to vote early. Uh, we had Spark Boston that teamed up with us and did stump trivia at the Dudley Cafe, as well as Dudley Cafe offering uh, free coffee to everybody that came in with a voted early sticker. And uh, really quickly, I just want to also thank uh, Lord and Jeff uh, Beef um, and Mutual Beef down in uh, Newmarket Square, who not only gave us uh, a discount, but actually gave us their price on uh, all the burgers and, uh, and, and hot dogs. So uh, that was very helpful and we appreciate that. Now you've got a few more days to crank out the vote here. And, and every year you, you have uh, people who want to vote, maybe they're older people, they don't have cars and getting around is not very easy. So I guess you've got something in mind to uh, help them get out there. Yeah, definitely. So we're doing rides to the polls and uh, sort of, I think we touched upon this a little bit last time I was here, sort of with elderly residents and getting to the polls. Uh, specifically, where we're having our event, the Smith House, is actually uh, sort of uh, been sort of uh, aggravating me just a little bit uh, because right across the street you have a family building where the folks can vote. There's a polling location on the first floor, but right across the street, the Smith House, the elderly building where all of our elderly uh, residents are, they have to go all the way across the Marcus Garvey Apartments. Uh, so uh, Zipcar has been generous in uh, offering us uh, a vehicle as well as uh, their time on election day to uh, give rides to the polls back and forth. And I believe that the majority of that time will be spent 
uh, going from the Smith House to the Marcus Garvey Apartments. Uh, but we also have other folks that are going to be helping out, and we're still, you know, if, if other folks want to help out, uh, we're still, we're still uh, signing people up. But if folks need a ride to the polls, you can give me a call directly at 617-849-6321, uh, or you can visit rocksvote.org, or you can actually... Uh, social media is probably the quickest way to get in touch with us. Uh, so we're on a lot of uh, social media platforms. We're on Facebook, uh, we're on Twitter, uh, we're on Instagram, as well as Snapchat. So uh, You're there and you're very responsive. That's right. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Ed Shoemaker from Madison Park Development Thank Corporation. You,